Lee Brown, and this is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, I've got Tracy Dupler. She is a three-year realtor from the Raleigh, North Carolina area. So if you happen to be in your early career stage of real estate, you will love hearing about her success. And if you're a seasoned realtor, might just waken your fire back up too. So enjoy this conversation with Tracy, and I'll see you on the other side. You're listening to Crazy Shit in Real Estate. You'll be amazed at all these wild but true situations that others have found themselves in. Because on this show, you'll hear uncensored, unbelievable stories from the world of real estate. I'm Lee Brown. Let's dive right in. Tell my audience, who is Tracy? Where are you located? How long you been in real estate? Give them a little bit of backstory to let them totally become enchanted by you. Sure, sure. So my name is Tracy Dupler. I am the broker owner of Tracy Dupler Realty Group, powered by eXp Realty. I am located in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I actually serve all over the place. You know, I help people by referrals all over the state, and I just serve my local area. I focus primarily on Raleigh, Wake Forest, and Rollsville and the Youngsville area. Although I will travel, I always say Tracy travels. So I do help Wake County pretty much uh, anything in Wake, Harnett, Johnston, I will help. Well, it's one thing to help in your local area. And I'm glad that you clarified that because obviously I go off on these rants all the time about agents who say they serve anywhere. But the reality is you can only know so much unless you're focused, but you can have somebody everywhere. And that's the one of the things we should provide as professionals is a good, solid, reputable name when it's out of our market. So for example, I've got somebody texting me this morning about Ocean Isle Beach. Well, it's because I own property there. So I do own property in Brunswick County. It's three hours away from Concord. I ain't trying to serve that even (laughs) if the state says I could with an active real estate license, I would be doing a massive disservice to that person. But I have the best somebody over there. So my best somebody is going to talk to them and then I'll learn alongside them because I love it. They keep me looped into the emails. I don't know about you, but when they loop me in and I can learn things about the area, I'm like, oh, how about that? Ain't that something? Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) And, you know, I always feel like I can give the best service possible when I am hyper local, just like I can give the best service possible by referring my clients to somebody else. Like, for instance, you're in Charlotte. There would be no way that I could help somebody responsibly and loyally in Charlotte, because I don't know the area, but I would be happy to refer them to somebody that I know, like, and trust that I know that they're in good hands with. Exactly. Like I'm actually in Concord and I serve parts of Charlotte, but like you, I tend Mm -hmm. to serve the area that's within a pretty reasonable timeframe. Once you get to the complete other side of the city, I know a lot. I know more than most agents, but that's not my bailiwick. And that's one of the most important things we do when we serve the public is be crazy knowledgeable. Like here, I have a meeting with our county commissioners on Monday. We've got to talk about some real estate stuff. I don't do that in every county in the state, but it gives me a chance to be a voice for the community because it's not a self-serving meeting. It's about what are we going to do about, frankly, this is about water and sewer, which is not sexy to anybody, but realtors. But anyway, <laughs> so Tracy, how long have you been in real estate? So I am actually in my third year, my third oh. full year. Yes. I started, I always say that I'm a COVID realtor. I actually oh. started. Yes. I literally am. I got my license in April, 2020. I'm sorry. Let's back up. I got my license in March, 2020. Signed on with my brokerage in April. Three days later, we got a notice saying that everything was shut down. So it was very creative, to say the least, on how I got my business, how I started my business, and how I am in business. Well, and what's interesting, and it's one of the reasons, you know, being involved in the professional association is so important. When you came in, you weren't allowed to work because we were deemed unessential until the end of Mm -hmm. April. And the reason we got essential services was the work of the Realtors Political Action Committee. That wouldn't have happened otherwise Mm -hmm. and with our relationships with the governor's office. So we're forever reminding agents that if you are glad you were able to go figure out how to buy and sell during COVID, it's because of the work that the trade association did. And sometimes 
when you're a member, you write the checks and you're like, oh, what's the point of this? It's a waste of money. <laughs> you realize that it was that big. And I still even look at then at the time I was mad and looking back, I'm mad to say who in the world can possibly say that some people are essential and others are not when all these different roles interplay to take care of the public. But yeah, so you definitely Absolutely. came in right when things were, well, you started at the the hiccup when nobody knew what was going to happen. And then just mm-hmm. a couple of weeks later, we hit this insane white hot market that we'd never seen before. So what did your broker do yes. in terms of mentoring and education to help you figure out how to navigate? Because even the seasoned realtors had a hard time navigating at first. Absolutely. So I was lucky enough because I was new, I was able to take coaching courses in my brokerage when I signed on. So they really walked me through, especially our contract, our buyer's agency agreement. Everything was made sure that I was filling in the blank, so to speak, correctly. I took a lot of courses and actually social media was what I turned on to because I figured, gee, here I am, an excited realtor, ready to go out there and slay the day. And I can't do anything. I can't talk to anybody. I can't look at anybody. I can't touch anybody. So social media became my best friend. I started taking courses and my brokerage actually did have a lot of online courses that a lot of seasoned realtors didn't have the time to take before. So uh, I said, didn't, didn't take the time to take, let's be real. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I didn't take the time. So I said, you know what? All I have right now is time. And so that's really what I think it actually catapulted my business also, because all I had was social media. And I figured with the higher percentage of people that were on social media at that time too, I said, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. Well, so. I like to mention that because sometimes when you are early career realtor, you're coming in, you're competing. And in the Raleigh market, there's thousands and thousands of realtors, not even counting the thousands of licensees, wildly competitive market. Everybody knows somebody, but sometimes the ones that have been in for a long time have gotten complacent and not all. So don't be thinking I'm broad brushing y'all. But I mean, <laughs> in reality, if you've gotten really good at it with the way that you do it, it's hard to break out of that rut. So somebody coming in fresh, fresh set of eyes into a different kind of market condition because you didn't know the other market conditions, given time to do the education, allowed you to really have a a good starting place that I'm sure there were some comments made about, hmm, how is she getting any sales? That Mm -hmm. happens a lot in our business too, but a lot of it just comes from the hunger to become more excellent. And as the markets change now, what are you doing right now as we shift out of a COVID era into a, a more normalized era? What are you doing to prepare yourself for the change? So again, it's education. I also constantly live out of my comfort zone. One of my business plans this year was to get business in different ways that I did not get business before, because I knew that those ways of getting business have to actually be implemented. I've also, I actually took a course on short sales and foreclosures because we all know that most likely will be our future. So it's really just not only mastering the market now and being up to date on what our conditions are now, but also being able to look into the future and see what is coming. Because as long as you see what's coming, you're going to be able to get prepared and you're going to be able to really educate your clients and help them make the best decision now, but for the future as well. Exactly. And I love that you're thinking in terms of just different market niches. And I don't think any of us think we're headed back to the era we saw in the Great Recession because we're in a different set of economic factors now. But when you see layoffs at companies and you see inflation continues to go up, some people are going to be so financially pressed, they're going to need a professional who says, look, here are some of the options so that we can give them the way to make the best decision for the long haul. So in addition to looking at financially distressed properties, what other area are you looking to grow your business in that was intriguing to you? 
So another thing that I do, I actually target expireds. I say, oh, hey, nice. why not? It's actually in the works. So, you know, I have had positive results from that targeting FISBOs for sale by owners, you know, and then another thing is just mastering what my niches already are. Right. I specialize in relocations and I specialize in luxury sales. I am a luxury sales specialist and I also specialize in new construction. So I feel like those three niches roll into each other sometimes. And so that's also just one point that I always focus on by mastering what you know and love and you do the best, but also prepare for all of these side items that might come along in the future, because you never know that might actually have to be my niche in the future. And I, in order to be successful, you have to learn how to roll with things, right? You know, during COVID, a lot of these seasoned agents, I heard numerous agents complaining and venting to me about how they didn't know what to do. And if you're so focused on what you did 10, 15, five years ago, you're going to be stuck in the weeds. So it's really important to constantly, like I said, get out of your comfort zone, think of what's coming ahead and think of how and where you're going to get your business and who those people are going to really be. I mean, that's like a life lesson, right? We should all want to be somewhere better, different, improved over where we were a year ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So maybe there's a whole time for a little little reboot. And I think a lot of people are feeling the reboot right now because when the markets change, the quicker we are to adapt, the more successful we'll be. So in your three years in the business, which to the rest of the world doesn't sound like much time, but in real estate, that is simultaneously (laughs) a million years in five minutes. So in in those three years, you've seen things that you did not expect because pre-licensing does not tell you anything about how real estate actually is conducted. Not at all. Now you're going to have to actually behave when you're with buyers and sellers, with landlords and tenants. So I'd love to know because, you know, my audience is always looking for a good story (laughs) they will never hear about on HGTV. Tracy, what have you seen in the three years you've been doing real estate that made you just drop your jaw and call somebody and say, y'all never going to believe this? Okay. So I will tell you, they always told me when I just got my license, they said, just watch. You're never going to forget your first client. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to have, you know, some nice little new first time home buyer couple. You know, it's going to be so great. It's going to be fun. Let's go home shopping. Well, my very first client was probably the worst one that I ever had. And it really made me think, besides COVID, if I can get through this, I'm going to be really successful. So this one particular client was moving from out of state. So it was already a relocation. It was already a custom build in luxury. Very first client. So I made the mistake of accepting to drive them around. That was my first life lesson in real estate is never drive around your clients. They have a car. They can always follow you. This was also during COVID. So they were masked up, gloved up, touching everything in houses, then coming back in my car with the same dirty gloves on, touching my doors. That's besides the point. If you are remotely awake, then you know that we are heading into some really tricky economic times. We have home buyers that have put the kibosh on buying. We have sellers who have found out suddenly their houses aren't dipped in 14 karat gold. And as a realtor, you are still trying to keep up with the business you have and trying to answer questions in the meantime while also managing sky-high fuel cost at the pump. Never fear because my new video course is coming out right now and it's called How to Dominate During a Recession. I've been a realtor for 22 years. My business went up every year during the Great Recession and it's all because of education. This course is four modules. There might even be some bonus content for you. The price is $199. I am delighted to bring this out as quickly as possible because friends, there's no time like the present to make sure our neighbors are stronger and we protect the American dream. Click on this link, www.dominatethisrecession.com and I'll see you there. Now back to this amazing content. So because yeah, now we know, but then we didn't know. So to be no, fair, I was like, okay. <laughs> yes. 
So it was a mother and daughter duo, and they were definitely different personalities, not on the same page, very spoiled daughter who wanted what she wanted. You know, mom did not want to spend as much money as she wanted her to spend, I guess. All right. So wait, wait, wait. Short end of the stick. Is this like eight-year-old daughter or 28-year-old daughter? 21. Okay. So we're going up. Full adult. (laughs) Full adult. Yes. So there was bickering. There was fighting that went on. Dead of summer. It was about June, July when I took them out. So now I'm driving them all over. We're going to see all these houses, meet with builders. My client, however, was a very sly New Yorker. No offense to New Yorkers. I'm originally from Jersey, so uh, no offense. But she was a very sly businesswoman from New York. And she had mentioned to me, she said, you know what I do? I wear people down until they give me what I want. I said, oh, okay. So I have to keep on my toes here. And now my Jersey self, now I kick into high gear. I bet it did. (laughs) Oh, yes. I'm like, okay, I know what I'm dealing with now. So she refused to sign a buyer agency agreement with me. So I said, okay, you know what? Let's just continue. I was brand new, fresh out of the gate. So we go see a couple houses. We meet with builders. And then all of a sudden, some of the builders refused to work with her because of her attitude, because of the way that she was. Then I find out I had started working, communicating with a builder's agent in a high-end community here in Raleigh. Absolutely, hands down, one of the nicest agents that I have met in my career yet. She's a seasoned agent, very professional, very classy. And me and her started talking because my client was interested in building in this particular community. Of course, I spend the whole day with my client, drop them off at their hotel room, and I get a phone call from the agent. She says, Tracy, I have to tell you something. She said, do you have an agency agreement assigned by your client by any chance? And I said, well, no, not yet. You know, We're just looking at this point. She said, this woman came back to the community. She told me how she doesn't like her agent. She hates her. She wants to fire her. She doesn't trust her. And what would it take to get you off of the contract and just work with the sales agent themselves? And I said, you know, I knew this was possibly coming. So she said, listen, she said, you're the procuring cause. She said, no matter what happens, even if she fires you, you are still getting your commission. I just want you to let you know that. She Aww. said, but Tracy, yes, she was fantastic. She said, Tracy, get that buyer's agency signed. So the very next day in the morning on time, I show up at the hotel to pick up her and her daughter. Buyer's agency was all filled out initialed by me and signed in hand, I walk into the lobby. The daughter is waiting for me. I text messaged my client and I said, before we go see one more house, we need to talk. So I said, meet me in the lobby of your hotel room. I need something for you to sign. So she said, okay. So I go meet her in the lobby. She is literally screaming at the top of her lungs to the receptionist in the hotel, complaining about her bed, complaining that the bathroom shower is leaking, and she's demanding that all of her hotel points be refunded. She wanted extra hotel points and she wanted an upgraded room. Okay. So now I sit down and I'm like, oh, geez, what did I just walk into? And now here I am about to be stern with her because I need her to sign something. So her daughter sits down and I say, hey, good morning. She goes, hi. She looks at me and she goes, well, that's my mom. She's being my mom over there. So I was like, oh, she must do this everywhere. So now my client walks over and she's now all, yes, all mad and fired up at the receptionist. And she goes, oh, so you needed to talk to me? And I mean, I could feel my heart beating out of my chest and I'm like, yes. So I put my big girl panties on and I said, we need to talk. 
Before we go and see any more houses, I need you to sign this buyer's agency agreement. And I explained what it was. I also had the working with real estate agent. So she tells me, well, I don't sign anything with anybody. I said, well, then I can't work with you anymore. So then she goes, okay, well, just give it to me. Let me read it over. I said, sure. I said, read it over. I'm happy to explain any line item that you do not understand. So luckily I got the buyer's agency signed. Oh, good. Oh, yes. That was a doozy. Closing was not fun. And working with her for the remaining of the time was not fun. That was definitely, that was an experience. I've never, ever had any client, all my clients, I'm very relationship-based in my business. And so for me, it just, it hurt me that she did not have that trust But at the same time, I also know not to take anything personal. And I figured if she's treating me this way, she's treating the builders that way, she treated the receptionist that way, she treats everyone like this. So I said, let's just get this to closing. Let's just keep it as business and that's it. But you know, aside from that, I have to tell you, all of my other clients have been amazing. I've actually made friends with... 95% of my clientele. And it's just been such an amazing experience. So anybody who's a new agent out there listening, I don't want this to scare you because this was like one of those once in a lifetime stories. And now at least I'm prepared for practically anything. (laughs) Okay, girl. So first of all, uh, you should know that crazy people are going to come back your way. So it's not once in a lifetime. So don't listen to her. Yeah. Y'all. It's going to happen. But the key is <laughs> how you handle it, right? And so what yes. you handled it was yes. probably the best thing that could have happened was being in the lobby of that hotel. Because if you'd not experienced her screaming at the receptionist, it would be mm-hmm. so easy for you to personalize that. But now you knew. And then the daughter's comment reminded you that this wasn't about Tracy. This was how this lady operates exactly. in life. And that just happens in dealing with the general public and should also tell you that this is where the old lady realtor is going to tell you made the worst mistake you could have made. You just said other things. Mm -hmm. You've you've seen it now, girl. You just asked for the craziest one (laughs) ever to come your way. You never ever (laughs) say you've seen it all. I don't know. I know. I know. Knock on wood. I'm knocking on my desk right now. I hope it's real wood. (laughs) It might be pressed wood. There's some wood in there. But, you know, that's, that's the joy of real estate. You do encounter... Absolutely. The really rough people, but the balance of them are those people that you want to have relationships with and you want to be friends with. And so I think the part of the life lesson in that, we all know this, if a hundred people say nice things to us, we enjoy that. And one person is negative and then we just kind of live on the negative. So mm-hmm. no matter which crazy scenario comes your way, because sister, something's about to happen, it's just going to happen. You <laughs> stay focused on all those good, happy people that you love because... Yes. They deserve more of your energy than the negative people. And frankly, the longer we stay in real estate, the sooner you realize that it's the nasty person that you need to refer to somebody else and say, you know what? There's probably a better fit for them because real estate is so competitive. There is somebody for them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, an old boss told me once, she said, for every chair, there's an ass to sit in it. Yes, she's right. Yes. And and I think my first client definitely taught me the art of referrals. <laughs> I got to point out the other thing that you lived on there for a second that we don't often hear in real estate. And I'm glad that you pointed it out that the other agent was a true professional. And we don't say enough good things about our competition Mm -hmm. enough. And you went straight to how great she was. And I love you for having that mindset that you highlighted what a great job she did because it benefited everybody. Because whether this lady was happy or not, she wound up getting in the house that she actually did want. Now, I'm sure she picked it apart later, but she had a place to live with her daughter that suited their needs. And it's just a good reminder to all of us. We're not alone in this business. And that's, that's half the battle to survival is not being in a lonely business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you said it absolutely on the nail and, you know, being with eXp Realty that we're a cloud-based brokerage, 
I work from home most of the time. So it can be a lonely industry, especially even if people are in a brick and mortar building with other agents. There is, there's so much competition out there, but I have been so lucky to have worked with amazing agents and connected with amazing agents. And I mean, there's agents in LA, Denver, the Charlotte area, here in Raleigh. I mean, we go out for drinks, we meet at conferences. There's so much connection and so much possibility if you just open up your mind. And the way that I run my business is very, again, it's relationship based, but I don't pay into leads. Everything is organic. It's either social media, referral, or it's my people. And I always tell other new agents because they always ask me, well, how am I going to get leads? You know, what should I pay into? And I'm like, don't pay into anything. Your people are your people. So Mm -hmm. there might be another Raleigh agent who has completely different people than I do. So why are we competing together? My people are going to be mine and yours are yours. And you know what? If I can't help one of my people, I'm happy to pass that on to you for a referral. Unfortunately, there are some that still don't get that concept and hopefully they will. But again, I... So hey, if they don't, I mean, people are going to build good habits or you don't. Mm -hmm. And the habit you've built though is not just having a list of people, you're communicating with them. And that's one thing that a lot of agents forget that there is no silver bullet. There is no magic lead source that's going to suddenly turn into great clients. It's the day-to-day practices of talking to people, putting out positive information on social media to encourage people to reach back. So if they're watching you, hopefully they're watching that it's a disciplined practice. It's not magic. It is hard work. And so thank you for exhibiting that early in your career because you got a lot of years to go. So you may as well do it well right now. Exactly. Yes. Before I'm too old or don't even want to anymore, right? (laughs) I I don't think you can be too old in real estate. The average age is 56. And so if the average is 56, there's lots and lots of years to go, obviously. So Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the show. All of my listeners and viewers, leave us some happy comments right here in the post. All of her contact information is in the show notes for this episode. So you can reach out to her and ask questions about Wake County and her parts of Raleigh. And if you want to find out more about how she's gotten to a level of success, I'm pretty sure she'd love to connect with you. So Tracy, thank you so much for sharing so much with us today. Thank you so much, Lee. It was so great talking to you. And I was so excited about today. So it's always a pleasure. Well, me too. So make sure, friends, you connect with Tracy because you want to be awesome. And I will see you around here next time. As always, I'm so super thrilled that you joined in for more crazy shit. And if you're a realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular human being who happens to have an unbelievable story that you need to tell the world about, or frankly, you just need to one of the story you just heard, then make sure to DM me on Instagram at Lee Thomas Brown or tweet me at Lee Brown or frankly, any social network where you hang out. I'm there. And if you had some fun, then you totally won't just subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. 